Peace to the Universal Family. This is Saw Amin Ra of Indigenous People Media Outlet. Now, today I come to you, you know what I'm saying? You know, this is a different kind of build. Normally, I don't like to touch on uh, the issues that's going on in the industry. But I just watched a, a documentary. And, um, you know, it's been a lot of talk about the documentary. It's called Surviving R. Kelly. You know, and it took me a few days to watch it. You know, I had to go back and watch it. But um, I just finished, you know what I'm saying? And um, a lot of things I knew that was on the documentary, but a lot of things that I was, uh, I might have forgot or just was unaware of, you know what I'm saying? The camera look a little blurry. But, um... Yeah, man, I watched the documentary. It was uh, six episodes, a three-day situation and all that. And um, it's caused a lot of um, back and forth in the community, which is a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Even though you have people on opposing sides, it's a good thing because it brings up the topic of pedophilia. And we all know this is a big problem in uh, the so-called African-American community. Or the so-called black community or whatever, you know what I'm saying? This is a big problem. And then a lot of times it gets swept under the rug. You know, you got the the old alcoholic uncle, you know, that's been, you know, molested the aunties or molested the, your mom or your sister, you know. It goes on in a lot of black families and it's a lot of times it's swept under the rug. So I feel like this documentary was good because it brought up a conversation that needed to be had. Now, as far as the actual documentary itself, out of the whole documentary, I do not want people to forget this one thing. It's one thing that's very instrumental in this documentary that we cannot forget about. Now, as far as the sex slaves go and, you know, the things that R. Kelly's... um partaking in as far as with the multiple women staying in one house and, you know, all of these type of things, you know, that's pretty much his business from what I know. All of the women are of age, you know what I'm saying? So they're old enough to make a decision if they want to stay there or if they want to leave. So that part of the documentary, I feel like is pretty much, um, you know, they digging a little bit into his personal life. And maybe it's because of his past, why they're doing it, or whatever, for whatever reason, they're digging into his personal life. And it's not me to judge to say whether a person is living up to my standards or not. You know what I'm saying? That's not that's not for me to judge that. So for him, having sex, slaves, and all that, I really could care less about that. But the part that I do not want people to forget about, and that's the main reason why I'm doing this video, is to for everybody to... I don't want nobody to forget that R. Kelly urinated on a 14-year-old child on video. He recorded himself doing this. If you haven't seen the video, you know, I've seen parts of it, and I can verify that it was a, a young girl in the video. I didn't actually see the part that where he urinated on her, but it's public records. They played the video in court. You know, he he basically urinated on a 14-year-old girl. So besides the fact of all the other things that goes into this whole debacle, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, you know, all of the details are great about how the parents took their kid. All of that stuff is great, but none of that is a crime. As far as I know and, you know, the, inf the uh, evidence that's been presented. But even though he did beat the child pornography, uh, that case, he took that to trial and he beat it, you know, and that's the case of the, where the 14 year old girl, you know, about the 14 year old girl and all that. But, you know, just because he beat it in trial, if you seen the tape, then you know that he, what he did, you know what I'm saying? So it's nothing really to debate about on that topic, but that's I just don't want people to forget that. You know, the brother makes great music. 
He has made great music for years, and you can't take that from him. But just like you can't take his music from him, you can't take away the fact that he's basically a pedophile. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I call him a pedophile to this day, even though we don't have no evidence of him still messing with young girls, is because he never owned up to the case of where he did mess with a 14-year-old and he urinated on her. You know what I'm saying? He never owned up to that. So how can I forgive him for something that he doesn't even want to be forgiven for? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, that's just my thing with this. I'm not going to make this video too long. I just wanted to keep that fresh on um, everybody's mind because I'm seeing that the conversation is stemming off to a lot of different things. Like, you know, everybody's pointing the finger everywhere else, but the person that committed the act you know what i'm saying now the parents of these underage girls that took their child around r kelly i blame the parents too like in the one instance sparkle that was her niece the 14 year old girl was sparkle's niece and she brought the girl around r kelly she introduced her niece to r kelly so you know and she owned up for that i mean she testified in the trial and everything so you know i definitely blame all the parents and um, I blame R. Kelly. But besides that, I'm not going to place the blame on the girls or the women or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? We can't lose sight of what the real issue is. And the issue is that this man is a pedophile. He urinated on a 14-year-old girl on video. This is public record. No, allegedly. You know, so... You know, that's pretty much it on that topic. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I usually don't do these kind of builds where I talk about, uh, you know, stuff that's going on in the industry. But I felt like this is a great conversation to be had. Like I say, this is something that's been swept under the rug in our families and in our community for a long time. So to have the conversation about molestation and pedophiles and the pedophiles in the community and, you know, these type of things, it's a great conversation to have. So, uh that's pretty much the gist of that. But I ain't going to hold y'all too long. I'm going to say, um, you know, energy and love to the Universal Fam. Cosmic salute. You know, peace and love.